Okay, I am back and now I'm on page 225 of the notes and uh, we're going to talk about, we're going to talk very briefly about the equation of a sphere um, and then we're going to talk about uh, the midpoint formula and then we're going to combine those so that we can actually like find the equation of a sphere. So uh, first thing we need to know is that the definition of a sphere is basically a 3D version of the definition of a circle, right? Circle, set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from one point. One can't show it. A uh, set of all points in a plane that are equidistant from one point, and the distance is called the radius, and the point is called the center. Um, so a sphere is a set of all points in space that are equidistant from the same point. The distance is called the radius, and the point is called the center. It's like the same thing. So let's use our information that we have about, oh, this is not, hold on. I got to, uh, technical difficulties, always. Let's get back in there. Okay, let me see if I can like move this around now. There we go. Okay, so let's use our distance formula information that we know and see if we can find it. So we're gonna call the center um, x0, y0, z0. Like I sometimes see it called like uh, h, k, I can't think what would come next, like h, k. I think x0, y0, z0 is fine. So let's use that. Uh, so the distance, between uh, our generic point, which is x minus x0 squared plus y. So x0, y0, z0 is the center. And then x, y, z is just a random point on the surface of the sphere. And so this distance should be equal to r, the radius of the sphere, which means that the equation of a sphere is x minus x zero squared. So like you might have guessed that this would be the equation. And I just want to share with you that I personally have always found it a little weird that the equation of a sphere, like it's in three dimensions, like in two dimensions, you square, square, square. I feel like, like I feel like in three dimensions, it should be cube, cube, cube. It's not, so like whatever. But uh, like in my heart, I feel like it should have been cubes. Um, but you can see if we do the work, we just don't get it. All right. So the next part of the notes here is really hard to deal with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump over to GeoGebra. I'm going to do something really similar. Then I'm going to come back here and mangle this thing. Um, and we'll see how that goes. It's not going to go great. Um, but so I'm going to switch over to GeoGebra. So I need to change what I am sharing with you. Uh, here we go. So I am in GeoGebra 3D. And what I've done is I've plotted two points and I put a segment between them. So the way that I put the segment between them, we didn't do parametrics for a line yet. You could probably guess them. It just adds a Z component. But instead I use the built-in segment command and I just did segment AB. So the point A is 413 and the point B is one, four, five. So what I wanna illustrate for you is that the midpoint is still basically the midpoint formula. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plot a point that's at the midpoint of the X coordinate. So it's gonna be a point on the X axis that's at the midpoint of just the X coordinates. So for the first point, it would have been four, zero, zero is like the closest point on the X axis. And then for the second point, one zero zero is the closest point on the x-axis. So the midpoint of those is going to be five over two comma. I don't know why it lets me put a comma in the denominator. It seems like it should immediately be like, no, you can't do that. Um, so 2.500. Zero, zero. We'll see where I'm going with this soon. I'm gonna do the same thing for the y's, right? So the closest point to A on the y-axis is zero one zero and we did a problem like this so if you're not sure go back and kind of like review that looking for the closest point on an axis um the next point what am i doing okay so yeah the closest point to b on the y-axis is zero four zero and then what i want is i want the midpoint of those so that'll be uh zero comma i didn't really think about this when i was doing it uh it turns out that those are the same which makes sense because i use four one and then one four good choices. Um, and then for Z, the closest point on the Z axis to the first point is going to be zero, zero, three. 
And the closest point on the z-axis to the second point is going to be 0, 0, 5. So you've been doing this. A lot of work. I need to find the midpoint of those. So 0, 0, right? It's just the midpoint. So I just realized that I'm using midpoint all the time in this. But these are like 2D points. So the midpoint formula probably still feels the same. Also, you probably already guessed the midpoint formula. OK, so what am I going to do now? I have all these things. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plot some planes. I'm going to plot the plane x equals 5 halves. So let me do that. x equals 5 over 2. And I'm going to plot the plane y equals 5 halves because of this point here that's kind of the midpoint of the closest points on the y-axis. y equals 5 over 2. And then I'm going to plot the point. Um, Oh, I never did the midpoint of these. Did I do them? I did, yeah, 0, 0, 4. So I'm going to plot the, the plane z equals 4. OK, so can we see the magic that has happened here? Um, I want to change some colors, I think. So I'm going to go settings, and then uh, color. I'm going to make that one that color, and click there, and make that one uh, this color. And then I guess I can leave one of them. And then my picture is in the way. So I'm going to close this. And then, OK. So the intersection of all of these three planes, or all three of these planes, is a point. And that point, maybe not so surprisingly, is actually the midpoint of our two things. So the point 5 halves, comma, 5 halves, comma, 4 is the midpoint. And so what I'm basically saying here is to find the midpoint, you find the midpoint of the x-coordinates, or the average of the x-coordinates, the midpoint of the y, or the average of the y, and then the average of the z component. So it's exactly what you would have expected. So as with a lot of, oh no, I just moved that point. Undo. Um, as with a lot of things that we do, we go a long way, oh, what? We go a long way to get there. I don't really know what I did there. It seems to have returned to its normal place. Anyway, um, let's go back to the notes. And I will try now to show you this in the notes. But I, it, I'm just not talented enough to do it. Um, so let's go back. So playing around with GeoGebra is one of the ways that I got as good at this stuff as I am. Um, I really recommend it. I think it's like. It's amazing that it's like free and you can just use it. Like it's mind boggling to me. All right, so I'm gonna do like sort of the same thing, try to do the same thing and uh, it's not gonna be great. So I'm gonna go like across here and then I'm gonna go like here. So I'm always using that idea of like being parallel and then I'm gonna go, so the one I'm not gonna be able to do really is go up like this and then what am I trying to do? Oh, the midpoint. So it would be like uh, something like that. I think the GeoGebra stuff is probably a little more compelling. Um, but to find the midpoint, so there's a lot of blank space there because I've chosen instead to use GeoGebra to fill it in. Maybe explain, if you're taking notes, explain what you would do in GeoGebra there. Uh, so the midpoint is just going to be x2, x, x, what? What am I trying to say? x2 plus x1 divided by 2? y2 plus y1 divided by 2? z2 plus z1 divided by 2? Also, I think like this might be the first time in my life that I wrote x2 plus x1, y2 plus y1. I, I would say every other time I've done y, x1 plus x2 divided by 2. I don't know what's going on there. So obviously, you can reverse those. Not a big deal. So how can we use this to find the equation of a sphere? Well. Uh, if I know the endpoints of the diameter, I know the center is the midpoint. So to find the center, we're going to take the midpoint. So that's going to be, should we just do it? So 3 plus 19 is 22 divided by 2 is 11. 6 plus 4 is 10 divided by 2 is 5. 12 plus negative 4 is 8. And then divide that by 2, you get 4. So I believe that that is our center. And now I need a radius. And I can use the distance. I could find the distance between the points and divide by 2, right? Find the distance. That's the diameter. Divide by 2. Um, that'll give you the radius. I think it's probably easier to do the distance from one of the points to the center. So I'm going to do 
I'm going to use the first one because I don't want to deal with that 19, even though like it's, it's going to be the same calculations anyway. Uh, 11 minus 3 is 8, and I got to square that. 5 minus 6 is negative 1, but I'm going to square it, so I'm going to make that 1 squared. Plus 4 minus 12 is negative 8. Again, I'm just going to use positive 8 because we're squaring anyway. And then what do we get? We get radical. 64 plus 64 is 128 plus 1 is 129. Okay, so we know the radius and we know the center. So we basically know the equation. So it's going to be x minus the center x plus y minus the center y plus getting real close to the edge here. Um, z minus the center z squared equals, can I cram it in here? You know, I, it's like, how do I select something? It's like I really should have just done a better job of spacing this. Let me see if I can move it. I just want to, ah, yes, satisfying and done. Okay, so, view. I don't want to do that. Ah, I'm accidentally type. I'm like hitting all these things that wants me to type. Uh, the radius squared, so it's got to equal the radius squared, so 129. All right, so uh, you could jump out of the notes right now if you want to. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go back to GeoGebra and just uh, plot this because uh, I think that it's good to see a lot of things in GeoGebra, basically why I'm going to do that. So going back to GeoGebra, and you know what? I'm going to start a new one, so I'm going to go to GeoGebra Classic. I'm going to choose 3D calculator here. And I'm not go I'm going to delete the old stuff. I don't really know what that does. I mean, I kind of do, but I'm going to say that I don't. OK, and to plot a sphere, you can actually just type it in. x minus 11 squared plus uh, the quantity y minus 5 squared plus the quantity z minus 4 squared equals 129. And it's like weird, right? What is happening? So we are having a problem because we can only see part of space. So I'm going to zoom out. Now, 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 now. And there we go. OK, so what can we do? I'm going to plot the point 3, 6, 12. So that's a point. You can see it's on the sphere. I'm going to plot the point 19, 4, negative 4. You can see that's on the sphere. I'm going to put a segment between A and B. That would be the diameter. And then I'm going to plot 11, 5, 4. That is the center of the sphere. And you can just get a nice visual that we did it uh, correctly. And that's kind of fun. All right. So uh, I am going to end this video here. And I will be back to do more with you uh, soon. I hope you're finding this helpful. Whoops. That didn't stop this at all. Wasted my smile. Uh, here we go. I hope you find this helpful.